Hey gang, Scott here. Welcome to In the Field and thanks for joining me. Uh, this this In the Field's a little different than some of the ones I've done previously where I usually just dive right in. I'm on location uh, because the little bit of field footage I have is from a scouting run that I was doing prior to the Big Sur workshop I just finished hosting oh, uh, maybe uh, three to four weeks ago. And um, the reason I wanted to share that little bit of footage is so I could give you a comparison of two photos of roughly the same subject, nearly the same composition, uh, but the conditions were very different and how that really matters to the photo. So um, I went to scout this area called the Ghost Trees. This is a long 17 mile drive and there are these, these old gnarled you know, remains of trees, you know, just the stumps, some branches. There's no growth on these things anymore. And they're right up on the, uh, on the edge near the, uh, the ocean. And they can make good subjects. Uh, they can be challenging to get a good framing on. Uh, so let me just share a little bit of field footage with you so you can get, a, you get an idea of what this location is like. And then I wanna come back and show you a couple of photos. I stopped by the so-called ghost trees at Pescadero Point along 17 Mile. And at first I was uh, like, oh, okay, you know, a couple of trees and uh, not like, you know, major, wow, gotta break out the camera. The more and more I walked around, you know, I started seeing interesting shapes like, you know, like this, this twisted log behind me and then the ghost trees in context and uh, some things started to open up. There's some opportunities here. So I'm going to spend a little more time, uh, get the, uh, get the, you know, the, the uh, SLR out and, uh, and start working with it. Certainly a challenge with this location is being able to isolate one of these ghost trees. And uh, there are a few subjects that lend themselves to it. There are some that, as interesting as the twists of the logs were, the the way that the the, the trunk you know it bent around, you can tell how uh, how battered these trees got with the winds and just, you know, the unrelenting nature of the you know, being on the ocean there. But there was this one here, this 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 tree here, and I captured this during that scouting uh, visit. Where you know, very just long, lone bit of a, of a trunk there, a couple of branches left, and I went in the black and white direction because you know it was midday. There wasn't really anything going on in the sky at all, and uh, yeah, there's a secondary ghost tree kind of down here where um, that was that was interesting. I tried photographing that as well uh, in in different angles, but I liked this uh, the look of this one here. And then, you know, about a month later, I'm back at this location uh, with the workshop group. And we had a very different sky. About the same time, though, I, I photographed this one here around 12 noon. And then the workshop, we were passing through this area maybe 1130 in the morning. So, you know, not like a dramatic, uh, we got there at, at, at sunrise or sunset and things were different. But uh, let me just show you the other photo here. A month later, almost the same composition, right? You, know, you can still see that secondary tree there, but that sky is so different and it makes such an impact on the photo. And, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, you're probably thinking, hey, you could just drop in a sky, Scott, do a sky replacement. And I could, I could go back to uh, to this photo and put in a different sky. Um, I don't know. I just I'm I'm not I'm not in, as into sky replacements as I once was. Um, and when I have a photo with that natural sky, I I don't have to go and do that. And so I want to look at these uh, these side by side here. Let's take these two, and uh, we'll put them side by side. You know, almost the same composition, certainly the same subject, but just the difference of conditions, and this really underscored the uh, the importance of good conditions when you are working on landscapes. Yeah, we have digital tools. We can push pixels around. We can replace skies. But you know, for me, part of the enjoyment of getting out in the field and capturing the images is a bit of that chase. You know, you're chasing that perfect set of conditions that lend itself to creating a really compelling image. And you know, these two, looking at them side by side, uh, Kind of really underscored that for me, so I wanted to I wanted to share that with you and uh, and and hope that that uh, you know I hope it resonates with you because uh, you know as much as the digital tools are wonderful and you know I love post processing too, uh, there is something to be said for just capturing the 
beauty of nature the way it was on a particular day and you know it's it's like i said it's part of the chase it's part of the uh, the game of landscape photography i hope you found the video interesting and useful i'll be back in a couple of days and uh, we'll talk about the post processing of that uh, that uh, more dramatic black and white photo uh in in post later this week so i hope you'll come back and until then my name's scott davenport have fun